How can I be proud of myself when I still need to stay humble? The irony of making it big is that you need to start from small. They say growth is measured in size. But if size doesn't matter, is it easier for people to watch the space? See, I also want to be successful. But it's hard to accomplish a desired aim when people keep shooting you down. It's even harder to look up when you don't have any role model. Lately, I've been longing for inspiration, but I soon realized that I need to breathe. See, my source of motivation, believe it or not, happens to be my mouth. As strange as this may sound, but I just love the ability to voice myself. Yeah. Poetry proved to be the platform I could just lay down my thoughts. At the same time, my emotions were the foundation of my understanding of life. It took a while for me to realize that I'm society's number one enemy. Reason being, I'm not everyone's favorite. Many hate me because I question religion, they think it's blasphemy. Others dislike me when I question science because I don't believe in pseudoscientific theories. No wonder people fight against me. They've been told to keep their enemies close. But I only make eye contact to those who fail to see the truth. My mission is not to make a statement. My mission is to make the impossible possible. And the probability of me succeeding doesn't range from zero to one. But it ranges from zero to 100 because I am totally capable. I don't know if you've realized, but I rely on my confidence to gain faith. Spiritually, I'm not inclined even though my soul is on a different end. I know for a fact that there is a creator of humankind. We call him our father. And luckily, I inherited his creativity so it doesn't become dead. And with, his creativity, and with his creativity, I make a living through words. By writing poems about what I believe is wrong in society. See, the contradiction between good and bad is based on moral values. But what's funny is that only poor people uphold these values. Whilst the rich only care about revenues. I'm just glad I could afford to say these words. Concerned the fact that nowadays money talks. The thing is, saying life is not fair doesn't console me anymore. Saying life is full of ups and downs doesn't uplift my soul either. Too many times I've been disappointed. Too many times my expectations have not been appointed. But for the first time, I feel immune to society. Funny how white blood cells run in a black man's body. My skin is like a dark cloud. <laughs> My skin, my skin is like a dark cloud on a blue Monday because every second of the week I pray for a sunny day. I remember that one day I told my family I wanted to study the weather. I was getting tired of people telling me you cannot predict the future. Whether that was true or not, to me it was determined by the fact that the temperature was cold or hot. So I went to university to pursue a degree in geography. To my surprise, I was gifted enough to make it to UKZN. Currently, I'm doing my second year and it's very electrifying. This is because some students on campus are not financially stable. While many blame capitalism, I blame the use of small letters to address financial ways. Over the Easter holidays, I came to a conclusion that the education system was like a rotten egg in the land of milk and honey. And the byproducts are sugar daddies who buy candy for young ladies. Oh, oh, how sweet of you to bless young girls. But the moment they sneeze, it's already too late for them to realize that you are nothing but swine flu. I don't intend, I don't intend, I don't intend to sound negative. I don't intend to sound negative, but at the same time, I don't understand why HIV is considered positive. Someone once told me that the real existence of sicknesses is for population control. It soon appeared to me that human beings are nothing but an experiment getting out of control. Hence, hence, people, hence people seek spiritual guidance from remote places. Tell me, why do we go to church if God is everywhere? I have these rhetorical questions, but I know God is the answer. But before I get too spiritual, I'd like someone to explain to me what happened to embracing our African rituals. 
The ironic part is that losing our customs has become a tradition. From my understanding, the loss of culture is driven by globalization. Do not be misled by these big words. It only means the world is getting smaller and smaller. Being born in the era of the United Nations comes with many complications. International cooperation will never be achieved through ungovernable organizations. I repeat, and this time pay attention to the prefix. International cooperation will never be achieved through ungovernable organizations. I may be young, but I'm not naive. Being 18 years old doesn't mean I'm easily deceived. Fully aware of my surroundings, I make sure life doesn't push me to a corner. And like I told you before, saying life is not fair doesn't console me anymore. Saying life is full of ups and downs doesn't uplift my soul either. Levels. Yeah, well.